Hello, my friend. The following game is very interesting. We see white opting for a substandard opening, which, however, is quite popular. So you as black should better know how to answer it. Then black is falling into the regression trap, which by itself is not that spectacular anymore for viewers of my channel, as I have already given two examples of that. But the thing this game is standing for is a twofold double step. This is really amazing. What is a double step? It is a micro maneuver. It is a maneuver of a single piece where um, before reaching its final destination goes to another square in order to misplace an opponent's piece. This is a concept used quite frequently by strong players. But I don't recall ever having seen it twice in one game. Surely I went through games where this happened, but I was not aware of that at that time. Okay, let's start our game. e4, c5, the Sicilian defense. Knight f3, e6, d4. White plays the open Sicilian. Knight f6. And now, as you know, the normal move is knight c3, which was not chosen. Our man played bishop d3. So after knight c3, the main line, which was played roughly 60,000 times in Chessbase online database, black has three options. The best option is now the four knight variation, knight c6. But then we have also the, let's say, complicated pin variation. And finally, the scavening variation. So by playing bishop d3, white essentially avoids all this bunch of theory. So we can say this is the lazy man's move. So that's why it is quite popular. Everything which is connected uh, with uh, avoiding too much of an effort is popular, as you can understand. It was roughly played 8,000 times, so you as black, you uh, have to be prepared to face this move. There's one major problem with bishop d3. Black can now, if he chooses to, um, steer the game into a dead drawish position, into a, into a very dull position type. That's why only if you play against um, inferior players, you should choose this move as white. Now black answered knight c6. If he doesn't, if he plays, let's say, d6, white can play c4 and has a plus equal position. This is a hedgehog position type, which gives white a slight advantage due to his better spatial conditions. White has space advantage here. So knight c6 is the critical test of bishop d3 putting the finger into the wound by attacking the now unprotected knight on d4. So white, if he does not want to lose time, let's say by playing knight b3, has to take on c6. And now black has to make a decision. The most easy way is to play d takes uh, c6, which is um, bringing about um, a symmetrical distribution of pawns and this is the, the main problem here for white because after castles let's go back half a move um, you know that this move here loses a pawn right after queen f5 check beginners often fall for this kind of trap but you see it's quite easy so white has to castle before playing e5. Now e5 would actually be a good move, but black can simply prevent it by blocking this pawn and taking his fair share of space in the center. Now white has a slight initiative, but after knight d2, <clears throat> bishop c5, a4, to grab some space on the queen side, castle, knight c4, attacking the e5 pawn, queen c7, and now let's say bishop g5, bishop e7, queen f3, bishop e6. The position is equal. 
So White could, could now try to place his knight on f5, but after h6, bishop h4, knight h7, exclamation mark, the position is equal. White's initi initiative evaporates here. Going back to the position after knight takes c6, as you can see by the game data, black was the clearly better player and of course did not want to have a symmetrical pawn structure. He wanted to play for a win, that's why he took with a b pawn. Now it becomes a bit more interesting. Castles, now there is a threat of e5 again in play. What can black do? in order to meet this threat. In the game, he played e5, which was not the best move. So the correct move would have been d5. This is my advice for you as black if you want to play for a win. If you are um, satisfied with only a draw, you could have taken with a d pawn on c6. So d5, black has a majority in the center. This already indicates that he is doing fine. e5, knight, d7, attacking the pawn, e5, rook, e1. Now black must be a bit careful. White has uh, a bit of space advantage here in, um, in, uh, in the center and on the king side. So a sloppy move as bishop e7 would lead to problems after queen g4 attacking the g7 pawn. And now you don't have a good way to defend that pawn, right? If you castle, you lose the exchange. But if you play g6, um, white would also play bishop h6 and you could not castle anymore, at least not that easily. So after rook e1, the best move is a5. Just keep uh, the king side untouched for the time being. A5 is, a5 is grabbing space on the queen side and also it prepares to activate the light squared bishop. So let's say white plays c4 here. Now after c3 is not possible anymore, black can develop his bishop to be for attacking the rook, knight d2, bishop a6, and this position is equal. Now after queen g4, black can castle as bishop h6 is not possible anymore. And let's say a3, f5, black has no problems, the position is equal. Now the queen is attacking the f2 point, that's why queen takes e6 has to happen, winning a pawn, but after bishop d2, uh, bishop d2, knight c5, black is having the initiative. This position is roughly equal, but now black has more active play. So let's say after a5, white is not playing c4, but knight d2. Of course, bishop b4 wouldn't make sense anymore. But bishop a6. So that was the idea of a5, um, introducing this possibility to exchange white's strong bishop d3. Takes, takes. Let's say white wants to <clears throat> uh, try to prevent um, black's development of the king side by queen g4, then. Black can play g6, and now after c4, he can continue with bishop g7. As he hasn't played bishop e7 yet, he can still fire and cat with bishop, and that, that is perfectly good for black's king safety. Now the e5 pawn is under pressure, and after knight f3, queen b8, black add adds to this pressure against the e5 pawn, and is doing fine. This position is more or less equal. But also white now has to be very careful with his potentially weak pawn e5. Coming back to our game, black did not play d5, but opted for blocking white's pawn with e5. And now white played f4, which is not a bad move, but maybe not the best. Um, if white plays c4, black should equalize after bishop c5, highlighting the fact that the d4 square is weak. I think the best move here in the position after e5 is bishop e3 in order to prepare um, c4. For instance, after bishop e7, c4, uh, white is uh, slightly better here, has um, some nice space advantage. Um, black can try to um, 
exploit the omission of c4 by pushing his central pawn in order to build up a perfect pawn center. It is a nice center, that is true, but it will be undermined uh, outright by c4. Now, of course, d4 has to be played. And now after bishop g5, um, we see black having these two central pawns, but he has a problem with his development. Let's say bishop e7, knight d2, castles, rook e1, putting pressure on the e-pawn, knight d7 takes, takes, <clears throat> knight b3, threatening knight takes d4. Let's say queen g5, and now queen c2 attacking the h-pawn, h6, c5, and you see black's center pawns don't uh, uh, pose a problem for white. They are not mobile, so there's no e4, e5 possible, but white's c-pawn is, uh, by contrast, very vital here. So white is clearly better in this position. In our game, white answered e5 with f4, also a logical move. For instance, if black now would play d6, white would get a slight advantage, for instance, after queen e1, bishop e7, takes, takes, knight e2, castles, king h1. White has some play on the king side, as he has the uh, half-open f-file, but also can he play or hope to play against black's pawns? The knight might go to c4, attacking the e5 pawn, and the other pawns on the queen side are isolated pawns. Oh, this is a mixed bag, and everything put together just um, gives white this uh, advantage of roughly half a pawn. What black did was better than that. Black didn't play d6, but bishop d6. Exclamation mark. It's a typical device in order to fight for the square e5. This is more active than d6, as you can see, because in, in some positions, black is threatening to take white's f-pawn. What And if white takes on e5, of course, the bishop will um, end up on this nice square, and white's e4-pawn would then be isolated on the half-open e-file. Now, white played queen e2, king h1 is a bit better, but also then black should equalize. Now came a mistake by black. So the best move is now castling, and let's say knight d2. This is a typical device in order to play for the squares d6 and e5. This is what we also, happen, uh, what we also saw uh, happening in the game. So here knight d2 threatens knight c4, but black takes here on f4, e5, rook e8, pinning the pawn, knight f3, bishop c7, bishop takes f4. Looks quite good for white, but black is able to get rid of white's active e5 pawn. For instance, rook d1, queen e7, rook e1 takes, takes, now the pawn is gone, bishop e6, and now it's true that um, black has two isolated pawns on the queen side, but he has quite active piece play. Rook d8, bishop d5 to follow. And what's speaking for black are these three pawns in front of his king. White only has two pawns protecting his king. So this is something speaking for black's position. That's why the position is more or less equal. In the game, black played queen c7 instead of castling. And the problem with this move is that now the king stays in the center and there might be some problems in the e-file. As a consequence, white plays knight d2 exclamation mark, threatening knight c4, fighting for the square e5. What can black do now? What he did is bishop c5 check, but that was a mistake. Let's have a look at the alternatives first. Another bad move would have been e takes f4. This can be punished, e5. I told you the king on e8 is calling for this kind of trouble in the e-file. Bishop e5, knight c4, d6, bishop f4. Castle, castles, takes, 
rook e8, rook e1, takes, takes, check. And now we see there is a problem with the knight on f6 with uh, black's kingside. White's pieces are very active and actually this position is already won because there is no way for black to deal with the threat bishop takes f6. For instance, knight e5, question mark, queen g5 with a double attack on the bishop and the pawn g7. So the best move after knight d2 is to castle. But after king h1, in order to anticipate a check on that a7 g1 diagonal, e takes f4, knight c4, rook e8, takes, takes, bishop f4. We see white having the two bishops and of course the control of the dark squares. This position is clearly better for white. But it would have been the lesser evil for black. In the game, black gave a check instead of playing the better move castles. King h1, d6. Actually, this looks quite decent at first glance, but we know that appearances are deceptive. Now, the best move would have been knight b3, bishop b6, a4. This is what the engine indicates and claims. Uh, a one position for white already. For instance, a5, dealing with the threat of a4, a5, takes, takes, and now bishop h6, the underminer. We have seen this in uh, some videos before here, and this bishop h6 motive, it also will happen in our game. Um, and here it is very effective. It's just undermining black's position. Black cannot really castle here, but Everything else also loses. Now we have rook takes f6, um, g takes f6, and now queen f3, threatening mate one way or the other. In the game, white played knight c4, question mark, but good enough for a clear advantage. By itself, it is a good square for the knight. So now black should have castled, which he didn't. After f takes e5, d e5, a4, white is clearly better. In the game, black played bishop e6. This was a mistake. Takes, takes, and now bishop h6. Our topical move, bishop h6 again. Actually, by playing bishop e6, black fell into the regression trap because now he has to retreat with his bishop to f8. Castling doesn't work here. Because, as you have seen just a minute before, white uh, again can just play rook f6, gf6, and now queen f3 with a mating attack. So, only move for black is to retreat with the bishop to f8. And here, the more logical move compared to bishop d2, which we saw in the game, would have been knight e3. But bishop e2 isn't worse because there is a transposition. I will explain in a bit. So knight e3 would be the logical move because there is still pressure on the knight f6. So no need to move the bishop h6 uh, to d2 here. It can stay here a bit longer. We will come to this position in a bit. So in our game, white played bishop d2. And this is uh, the double step. So d2 was uh, the, uh, the square the bishop was supposed to be in the first place. But before going there, white misplaced uh, black's bishop, which now has to spend another tempo in order to be developed. Black played now bishop e7. The critical move is bishop c5. And actually now the engine says that White's best course of action is to repeat this position here with bishop h6. Now again, bishop f8 and here finally white should play knight e3. We had this position just before. Now I want to uh, show you how this could unfold. Knight d7, now threatening the bishop on h6 of course. Bishop g5. And if black wants to develop, he, he should maybe play f6, bishop 
uh, h4, bishop c5. At first glance looks quite good for black, but uh, black is losing here because uh, white is better developed and can now um, see the superiority on the light squares, as you see. Knight f5, this knight is strong, okay, castling, but now after queen g4, black has to give up his light squared bishop because the pressure against the g pawn is just too much. So bishop f5, check, king h8, rook takes f5. Now white not only has the two bishops, but also the superiority of the, or on the uh, light squares. And the idea is to play rook h5, followed by rook takes h7, check, king h7, queen h5, checkmate. This is a typical mate pattern. But of course, white could also do it in a less spectacular way. He could play rook h5 and then queen g6. And after h6, rook takes h6. This is another idea to give checkmate. So black's king is in trouble now. I show you one line how this could unfold. Bishop e3, so the bishop helps now. Um, black now has bishop h6 uh, available. Rook d8, queen h3. Of course, now there are the, the, the threat is bishop g5, actually. Bishop g5 threatening both rook takes h7 and bishop takes e3, as you see. So bishop h6, sealing the h file, must be played. Bishop f2, knight b6, bishop e6, knight c8, bishop e3. Finally, white cashes in on his positional advantage by uh, winning a pawn uh, on, on the h file and then crippling black's uh, pawn structure. So coming back to bishop d2 in the game, instead of playing bishop c5, black played bishop e7. Of course, now bishop h6 doesn't work anymore because the point f6 is well protected, but now comes the second part of the story, the second double step. And this is what it's very beautiful, you know. Um, now, white repeats uh, what he did on the king side, on the queen side, with the same piece, bishop a5. Misplacing the queen. The queen has to keep the pawn e5 defended, so it has to go to b8. On b8, it is much less well placed than on c7 because now the c6 pawn is without protection. And now, finally, um, white places a bishop where it wanted it, where, where he wanted it to, to, to be placed in the, in the first uh, place, right, on c3. So the, mean, the maneuver was bishop h6, uh, d2, and then a5, and then c3, twofold double step. It is very effective here. Black answered knight d7, and you might think, well, if black now can castle uh, short, he is doing fine. But white uses the fact that black is uh, a bit disorganized yet, still hasn't castled for active play. Knight a5, exclamation mark, attacking the soft spot c6. This pawn was covered by the queen just a couple of moves earlier, but thanks to the double step, bishop a5, bishop c3, this is not the case anymore. Queen c7, only move, and now comes the final point, bishop c4, eroding black's uh, position. Now bishop takes e6 as a threat, of course, and black is lost. He cannot cope with the problems. So one move obviously would be bishop takes a bishop, but after queen c4, we see a double attack in place against these two pawns. If black already would have castled, then he could play, uh, let's say, rook c8, everything would be okay, but now he loses a pawn. So this would actually be black's um, best continuation, but Obviously, white is winning in the endgame due to his extra pawn. 
in our game, Black did not want to give up uh, a pawn just like that. And so he played bish uh, knight uh, f8, protecting the bishop e6. But this is uh, losing a pawn in a more bitter way for Black, because you might have a short look what, what you would play here, or press on pause. I will reveal it now. White simply can play a knight takes c6. Of course, the queen cannot recapture because of the pin, bishop b5. This position is lost. Now, black played f6. And now, white could have won on the spot, more or less, by bishop a5, harassing the queen. Queen c8, and now another attack on the queen. And after queen d7, finally, knight takes e5, f5, bishop e5, winning the queen. Okay, that would have been the most accurate follow-up, but honestly, it's not really necessary to be um, precise here. Also, the, the second best move, which happened in the game, is, is good enough, because white has an extra pawn for nothing. Bishop e5, yeah, the bishop has to be removed, of course, and now white has a nice majority on the queen side. I'll show you the rest of the game quite quickly. White finished this game in a decent manner. Maybe he, he here and there didn't play the, the, the engine move, but uh, more or less he, he played a, a good finish here. This is a good start um, by unblocking the c-pawn. White is setting his majority in motion. c4. Now b4 would have been a bit more logical than a3, but okay, a3 is also playable. Bishop d3, and now again b4 would have been best, but he played bishop b4. f5, black tries to generate some counterplay with his majority, his only chance. And now c5 is the best move according to the engine, but also bishop d6 is playable. And now b4, e4, rook d1, over protecting the d5 pawn, so c5 is possible now, which is also happening. And now the engine wants knight a5, but also knight d4 is okay. The threat is um, knight e6, of course. So what can black do? Um, in the game he played f4, let's have a look at uh, queen takes d5, then white wins black's f5 pawn, leaving black's majority quite harmless, while white has, of course, um, connected uh, more or less passed pawns on the queen side, right? The b4 is also a potential passed pawn, so this is an easy win for white, for instance, knight d6. Mm, rook e7, rook e1, attacking the pawn e4, and now after the exchange of queens, the pawn e3 will fall uh, quite quickly as white can approach it with his king. So instead of taking the pawn d5, black pushed his majority f4, and now white did what he intended to do, placing the knight on e6. Of course, this knight cannot be tolerated as beside knight takes f8, also queen takes e4 is now threatening. So rook e6, yeah, more or less forced. Now white has an extra exchange, attacking the queen, check. Harrison's the queen one more time. Of course, black must prevent the exchange of queens to stay in the game. And now more logical would have been queen takes e4. But also rook d4 worked for white. For instance, if e3, which did not occur, c6 followed by c7 is quite an easy win here. In our game, black played queen h4, and after queen takes e4, f3, queen h4, black finally resigned. I hope you also um, share my pleasure, which I um, felt when discovering this game with a twofold double step. See you then uh, in the next video, my friends.